In this tutorial, we're going to create some custom maps for Charlie the Chicken. Currently, we have Charlie the Chicken that is just using a single image that we got from the creator Frog Pixel. But today, we're going to use a software called Tiled and create some custom maps for Charlie to walk around in. To get started, we're going to get the free asset set from FrogPixel from itch.io. If you haven't already done so, download the asset pack for Pixel Adventure from FrogPixel and extract it to your asset library. We're going to have to copy the assets that we're going to use into the project that we've made for the Flame game. So under the Assets section, create another folder under Images called World. And we're going to store the assets for our world under the Images slash World folder. Also under Assets, so this is the same level as Images, create another folder called Tiles. And we're going to drop in the TMX file, so the map file for the tile set, into this subfolder called Tiles. In the pubspec.yaml file, because we created these new folders, even if uh, image, the world is under images, we're still going to need to add it in, as well as this new folder, tiles. So add these two folders into the pubspec.yaml to make sure that your game can find the assets. Now let's copy the assets from the folder that you extracted in, in your asset library directly into the assets folder of your Flutter Flame project. So let's first go into black background and I'm going to select this blue.png tile. I'm going to drop it into the images slash world folder of the project. So remember that we've already put this into the pubspec.yaml so once we restart the game, the game should be able to find these assets that we put into there. The next is the terrain, which is a, a number of different tiles in a, on a single sheet. Um, the step is not necessary, but I'm going to change it so that the, it's lowercase for this one. And instead of these parentheses and spaces, I'm going to put an underscore here. This is not necessary, but uh, and it does seem to work with the spaces or the parentheses, but uh, I, I think I'll just do that for some of the files. The terrain tiles is probably the main one that we're going to use. However, it's nice to have some other assets here. So let's look at what else is available within this pack. Uh, this pack means 16 by 16 pixel tiles, and I think I'll pick this pineapple one. So drop it into the assets slash images slash world folder and let's look at what else we've got maybe this dust particle it does look a little small here but we can maybe sprinkle some of the dust particles around the blue background to create some type of scene and it will also throw some confetti in there uh, 16 by 16 pixel confetti squares. I'll just change a couple more of these file names and then let's pop open the tiled editor which is a free editor. I already have Tiled installed on my system here, but if you don't have it installed, you can just go to mapeditor.org and download it. It's on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And then once you have it installed, you can just start it up in the normal way. So on Linux, I just type in Tiled and it starts up from the uh, command line. It's a nice graphical editor here. I'm going to create a new tile set, or a, sorry, a new map. I'm 
And one of the more important configurations is to select Base64 uncompressed. Uh, the rest of the settings are, make sure that the tile size is 16 by 16. That's the tile set that we'll be using. And I'll select 80 by 40 for the width. Once we have the empty tile map, we're going to need to build some tile sets. So the tile sets are kind of like a palette of paint that you use to paint stuff onto the map itself. So it's important that the assets that we're using for the tile sets are actually in our flame project. Remember, don't make the mistake, you have two sets of these assets on your local computer right now. You have the one that you extracted from uh, itch.io in that zipped file and then there's the one that you copied over into your flame project so make sure you're using the correct one make sure that this embed in map is checked you have to uh, really make sure that it's really checked because that's a very common error tile width is 16 by 16 pixels uh, everything else is, is going to be the default so as long as you've got that checkbox for embed in map you should be good to go and now we have this blue tile set. Uh, we'll create the rest of the tile sets first before we start painting here. So I'm just going to drag and drop the confetti onto there. It's using the same settings. It's uh, now that embedded map thing is default. By default, it's now checked. I think when you first start it, it's not. So do the same procedure for each of the graphics that you have in the flame project that you created. It's in the assets slash images slash world folder of your flame project. So get the pineapple on and most importantly this terrain set. Once you have it all, you should have a set of tile sets that you can use to paint onto the screen. Now that we have some tile sets in here, they're embedded into our tile map, right? So that a map dot uh, this tmx file that we'll be creating so it's important that you save this thing into your flame project as well if you recall we created a separate sub folder within assets called tiles and this is the location that you're going to need to save this tile map into so select the assets slash tiles folder of your flame project and let's call it level1.tmx. I guess depending on how much interest this video series has, we, there might be a level 2 or you know we might stop it at, at level 1 and just kind of move on to another project in the future. But for now, let's call it level level1.tmx. And if you pop it open, you will notice that the there are the tile sets in here and they're they're already encoded as base64 within this map file itself. So now we can use these tile sets to paint um, various things onto the screen. If you don't have the same view of this map editor, this tiled map editor that I do, it might be because under view you might have to select some of the additional panels. In the upper toolbar, I'm selecting the Bucket Fill tool. So it's the one that looks like a bucket. And I've selected the blue tile. And just with one click, you can fill up the entire screen with this beautiful blue color. So under the Tile Sets, since I have a number of tabs of Tile Sets, I'm going to select some of the tiles for the um, the ground the ground portion of it, and then with the stamp tool, so I've just changed it to a different tool set. I can now stamp in or almost use it like a paintbrush the brown ground that I'll be using, and then you could select maybe some of that grass here and just paint it in. If you notice on the upper right hand corner or the upper right hand panel, I'm using a, it says layers. And right now I'm just typing in on the 
or painting it on the tile layer. But we're going to create separate layers, and this is one of the ways that the a map file can have uh, different different types of objects on here. So right now, this is the base one. We can add a different layer for objects in the future and block this out for collision detection. But initially, we're just going to end up with a picture. So it's almost like you're you're painting with these uh, colored squares and small small images here. So let's build out the maybe like a center block here that our chicken Charlie might have to eventually jump onto or somehow fly onto, although we don't have the physics for gravity built into the Charlie game yet. Let's see what else we've got here. I think I'm going to put make another layer, as I mentioned, and this one was called decoration. And we'll put some additional decorations on this layer. Uh, maybe something like the dust or the confetti. And then for that layer that we've been working on, so just calling it tile layer one, let's call it base so that we know that this is the, the base layer. Okay, so we've got two layers now. The layer on the top will be visible. Uh, more visible so you could put the the dust on here and even if the dust doesn't take up the entire square it won't be like a missing piece on it if you drop everything onto the same square um, you, you can have maybe some missing parts of your map so, so unless the object is completely square is going to look like um, like parts of it will be missing right because parts of these tiles are transparent but with the layer you'll see the the layer underneath that so these pineapples are a little small I might increase the size of it later but maybe let's build it up a bit more here Back on the base layer, I'm going to use some of these things that look like bricks to build up some type of, uh, maybe like a building structure or something man-made that kind of has a feel of, of bricks. Uh, if I were to paint a little bit more carefully, it'd look a little bit better. I noticed that these, there's some type of square thing here that looks like platform obstacles. They look pretty good, so I think I'll use some of them here. There's a number of these. I think if I looked at Frog Pixel's artwork, I could get a better idea of how these things could be used. Um, I'm sure if you spent more time, you can make a better demo than I can. And remember that in the future, we can uh, block these out so that eventually they'll have collision detection on some of the objects, the ones that we select. Okay, so let's maybe make the fringe here and finish it up uh, just for the purpose of just demo, um, and then eventually we will get it into the map in the next video. So you'll have Charlie the Chicken running around your custom map, so and you can have a lot of fun. There won't be bounce or collision detection yet, but we'll handle that at some point in the future. Have a great day.